that my heart beating? <laughs> All right, here we go. I think we've got it this time. We are, we, live. we are live on Facebook. Well, hey guys, I am so excited uh, about tonight. We're we're running a little bit late because we had some technical difficulties, but I think we got it this time, right? Praise God right. for technology. Yes. Amen. Tonight, I'm with some of my closest friends. Uh, these are all people that are part of the Hope Project. And we're going to be talking tonight about relationships and recovery. Um, we've been in a series called Real Raw Relationships, and we wanted to end it with a panel of some people that are part of the Hope Project that can maybe offer some insight into uh, into relationships and recovery and, and recovery. So um, we're going to be live chatting with you throughout this. So we would love to hear your questions. We want to answer, you know, what, whatever you have. Um, and then we're just going to kind of talk. We're going to keep it real um, laid back and uh, and we're going to uh, do this thing. And hey, guys, if you're not uh, if you're not talking, go ahead and mute yourself. Um, Hannah just texted me and told me to say that to everybody. So, um, <laughs> so I want to start real quick with well, not real quick, but I want to talk about. Uh, we're going to just bring it back up because I felt like it was going in the right direction. What do you guys think about uh, waiting? a year to get into a relationship. And we'll start with John again for 500. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I wor we worship the God of miracles and uh, I was discipled and mentored that yes, we do need to take time to learn who we are in Christ and to really find our identity and be able to walk that out in truth before we really try to delve into relationships because they'll be uh, miserable failures and it's not on either party. It's just not, you know, the right time. Yep. And then I felt like as soon as I really surrendered that part of my life and I just asked the Lord to, you know, put my, that search to sleep and wake me up when he had the right person for me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, not soon thereafter, uh, Amanda came into my life and it was just, you know, you knew, you know, that, you know, that, you know, Oh yeah. And, uh, you know, glory to God. Uh, but to never despise any seasons that we go through, they're all growth yeah. periods. Yeah. That's so good, man. And I think that, that you would agree with this, that when it comes to dating and recovery, um, yeah, you're probably gonna have to wait at least a year. Um, but really, it's like when it comes to people telling me their sobriety date, I'm way more worried about the condition of your heart than some day you decided to stop drinking or using drugs. Because the condition of your heart is what determines, you know, what you can do, who you can be with, you know, who you can marry someday. And I had the great privilege of officiating John's wedding. And, uh, I know that he waited for the, the right amount of time for the right person. And I'm, I'm super proud of you too and excited for you guys. Um, so what, now what do you think about uh, that, Barbara? Oh yeah. Oh, I just like to say that um, I was, um, when I first got into a recovery program several years ago, I was, um, emotionally, um, emotionally, spiritually, and physically broken. I needed, I was a believer in Christ, but I needed to go down that path of the 12 steps. I needed to bring everything I knew about Jesus Christ, every Bible study, every sermon, and walk it down this path I could walk to learn how to deal with this disease of addiction that had really affected me mm -hmm. uh, the majority of my life. I was uh, in a uh, recovery program only about six months. I had a sponsor and it was said to me in, in Al-Anon, uh, yeah, different groups say different things, but they said nine to months to a year. And at six months, I had made up my mind I was going to make a relationship change. My sponsor didn't really uh, mm, counsel me like maybe she could have. And, you know, I, I, I went and made an emotional decision that failed. 
yeah. in a relationship. And I had to uh, realize that it failed. I wasn't ready. I had to go back to my uh, the rooms of uh, my meetings, my 12-step group, and I had to continue to work on myself that I could make a relationship decision that wasn't based on anger or fear or um, uh, self-pity. And so, yeah, I'm a living example of definitely when they say, wait a year, takes yeah. a year to wrap your head around yeah. who you are and all the lies you've been told in your life living with this disease. Yeah. And I think what's funny is if you're just joining us, we're talking about real raw relationships, relationships and recovery. And um, if you had just joined us, you would probably think that Barbara is talking about uh, waiting only six months after six months after drinking or uh, using drugs to, to make a, a life change or decision. But she's actually talking about from the time she started her program of working a program for people who are codependent and are in Al-Anon. And so that's one thing at the Hope Project we're firm believers in is when the families of people who are addicted come to our organization, they're usually as sick as, if not sicker, than the person who is uh, the drug or alcohol addict because they have enabled for so long, it's just, they've just been drained of everything they have. So, um, man, I think that's really good to, to hear that Man, even when it comes to maybe you didn't deal with a, a you know a drink or a drug, but you just are dealing with you know growing and finding purpose and getting freedom from uh, enabling somebody. It's the same thing. It's the same thing for for Al-Anons or what, codependent people. Um, you should wait a year and then seek counsel from the right people to get into a relationship. So that's really good. That's really good. All right. So um, Hannah. Tell us about, um, because you're, you're a single young female, tell us about what that looks like for you when it comes to dating. I mean, um, first off, I'll tag on to what you kind of were saying. Like, it doesn't matter what kind of addiction you've went through. You need to wait at least a year. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you went through, what, um, whether it was drinking or codependency or whatever. So I definitely did that. And I realized very quickly on when I thought that I wanted a relationship in the midst of that, that it was just going to be completely downhill in that case. And like, I tried to get into one and this was years back, but I tried to get into one and it just kind of like Barb said, like, it just went yeah. to nothing. Um, yeah. So now like I'm open to a relationship now, but I'm still setting certain boundaries and certain things that I do in my daily walk with the Lord, like staying steadfast in him first and putting him as a top priority because I don't want to be yeah. satisfied in anything more than him. Yeah. So if you're watching guys, she is single, but she has very high standards. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but also like something that the Lord has been teaching me or, um, recently is to pray for my future spouse because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what battle they're facing right now. So that's something that the Lord personally has been teaching me. Yeah. Is so those are the two main things I do currently. That's really good. Um, so if you're just joining us, we're talking about relationships and recovery and how the two kind of mix together. And uh, we'd love to hear questions from you today. We're live chatting during um, this Q&A. And man, we just want to answer the questions that you may have, but you weren't, you haven't been able to ask or um, you just need, you know, more heads than one involved. We've got eight here. So uh, maybe seven, seven. <laughs> There's two in one box. So it got me messed up there, but um, we'd love to hear your questions. Um, Nathan, tell us about, um, Tell us, tell us about <laughs> what it looks like for, um, I just totally brain freeze y'all. <laughs> well, so yep, there it's you all go. good. I'll tell you about, um, when I think about relationships and just to be up front with anybody, I, I'm not somebody who's gone, um, and dealt with addiction that, would say uh the normal label of addiction i think we're all getting <laughs> with social media and all that that's a 
uh, we have a form of addiction. But when it comes to relationships, I think I, I would echo things that everybody said up until this point. And it's the fact that before we even think about being in a relationship with somebody else, we need to understand the relationship that we have with ourselves, uh, the relationship that we have with the Lord. Um, yeah. And we don't, you don't hear about those relationships when it comes to the world and dating, how important your relationship with yourself is before you connect with somebody else. Yeah. You know, I remember being in, um, being in a, uh, the owl's nest in Florence, South Carolina. And I remember being in there and I was just like seeing one guy and girl after another hooking up, getting kicked out, ending up, um, you know, overdosing or whatever happened. And I'm just like, it always makes me think of the old saying, mama dropped off one crackhead. She don't want to pick up two, <laughs> you know, like you have got to work on yourself first. And so I want to ask you guys, what do you think about um, maybe going to AA or NA meetings and possibly considering someone there to date? Um, are you, are you, would you guys be open to looking there or say the codependent? Now, if you're married, obviously you don't have to answer that, but um, what do you think about like dating when it comes to like, I guess they call them the rooms. Um, do you think that, um, I mean, you probably, you definitely need to be picky. Um, but what do you think about that? Hannah? Um. The thing that immediately comes to mind is how long have they been sober? Mm -hmm. That would be a key thing. Cause I feel like you could meet anybody anywhere nowadays that could have an addiction or a struggle or yeah. let's be real. We all have some sort of addiction. Um, so I guess it would depend on like how long they've been sober. Yeah. Would be a key thing for me. I mean, I would be open to it if I felt like the Lord was in it mm -hmm. and like they would have to be a follower of Christ for me definitely mm -hmm. but those two key things would be what i would have to consider kind of mm. all right so <clears throat> coming from from you barb what would you say to someone you were sponsoring who isn't like an, an al-anon type person we're not you know a codependent type person and they said hey i just met this great person in aa what do you think <laughs> <laughs> run <laughs> No, <laughs> run. No, well, no. I mean, let's be real. It, it because... happens. It happens. Alan, I, I see it. I, I know two two marriages right now that are Al Anon and Al Anon. But I do know that marriages that have been saved with one okay. in Al Anon and one in, in AA, both working the program. Um, I say definitely wait a year. Get. I always say focus on yourself. Get your head together yourself first before you start looking to anybody else nobody can solve your problems you've got to happiness comes from the inside and all that you are inside you take and it comes out of you to um, love and serve another person you don't look to somebody else to meet all your needs yep. or you don't take yep. two halves and make a whole so now I'm always real careful and I say if I always say, if you haven't been in the program at least a year and gone through all the 12 steps, I say, stop, don't yeah. do it, yeah. back off, focus mm -hmm. on yourself. And so <clears throat> who would you say is going to be more attracted to one or the other, the addict or the alcoholic to the codependent or the codependent to the alcoholic or addict? Well, we have a... a we have a kind of a joke in around the <laughs> Al-Anon tables that says if an Al-Anon work walked into a room, she would automatically be automatically be attracted to the only alcoholic or mm. addict in the room. It's it's part of our DNA, part of our makeup, who we are, we're caregivers, what mm. we saw in our fathers and mothers growing up. So um And what I find is that those from AA, when they do get into relationships, they've been through recovery, they've uh, 
they're working a good program, but then they come up, the, the, the addict itself actually comes up with codependent issues oh, in wow. a relationship, whether it's with a, somebody in recovery or not. And nine times out of 10, they would benefit to be in the, in the, the rooms of uh, codependency right along with uh, the non addicts. Yeah. All right. So now we're not just talking about romantic relationships today. We're also talking about friendships and, and relationships with family members. So I want to kind of shift gears right here. What would you say, uh, Barb, to uh, someone who is watching this and they've got a family member that is hopelessly addicted. They don't know what to do. They don't know, should they give them money? Should they give them food? Like, do they, do they give them a subway card or what, what do they do? Well, the first thing I would say to a, a brand new person uh, coming for, usually they'll come and they'll say, I've done everything I know to do. I can't do anything else. I'm at the end of my rope. And I always, I always recommend that you stop and you look at yourself. And I always tell them the three C's. I said, what you got to realize is that you didn't cause this disease of addiction. You can't cure it and you cannot control it. And mm -hmm. I'm always asking them, ask yourself, what, why, am I, why am I paying for their uh, rent? Yeah. Am I trying to control that if I pay the rent, they'll stay sober. And mm -hmm. it takes a lot of prayer, it takes a lot of meditation, takes a lot of guidance. It's kind of, it's the same as when we come in as new Christians, we have to renew our minds. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. We're believers in Christ or maybe new believers in Christ or not believers in Christ. We have to renew our minds from all the old tapes that we've learned um, from childhood up. Yeah. Or so, we learn just getting into a relationship with a person with addictions. So you, would you say to the person that's watching and, and you know, they're, they think that they can kind of smart, you know, within, they can get with intelligence their way out of a, a codependent relationship, like, do you think that they can do that on their own? Um, can they, I mean, can, can people figure their way out of this thing or does somebody always, you know, end up getting hurt or what, what would you say to that person that is getting hurt over and over and over again? Um, would you say that it's common sense to figure their way out of that relationship or into a healthier relationship? Like, could they use their own common uh, sense to get out of that? What is it you guys say in AA that this disease is cunning, baffling, and, and something else? Powerful. Yeah. It's the same with us. Uh, you, you just, you cannot battle this uh, battle alone. You've got yeah. to have people of like mind. Yeah. You've got to have people that have been there before and yeah. can uh, give you advice because you'll, if, if, you, if you're in a relationship or beginning a relationship with an actively uh, drinking or drugging person, you will probably fall right into that trying to fix them role. Yeah. And you can't, mm -hmm. can't fix them. That's the first thing you gotta learn that you're, you're powerless over that disease. That's yep. step one. Came to believe a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity because it's a yeah. really crazy life that's really good and um <clears throat> one you know one thing i'll just kind of mention too is um maybe you don't know anything about the whole project maybe you just saw this shared and you're you're seeing these uh it looks like uh what is it, the brady bunch beginning on here you know dun, 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 dun. and you're like i'm gonna check that out um i would just want to tell you so what we've been talking about is is real raw relationships but um, what Barb was just mentioning and what we've been talking about um, is kind of part of our DNA at the Hope Project. Um, we've created a ministry um, to, to reach people for Jesus, um, to uh, see them saved, put in like-minded Christian community and grown up in their relationship with Jesus. Now in doing that, um, we invite the whole family of uh, addiction to come. And whether you're the father or mother or sister or brother, and you've got somebody that's addicted, 
in your uh, life. I mean, we, we want the whole family to come in and we actually have separate kind of programs for each one of them. After this at 715, we'll break out into uh, an addiction group for people, men and women with addiction. And then we'll break out into a uh, codependent slash Alanon group. And then a group for people who are looking for community and growth. But the great thing about what we do is when we, when we meet in person and what we do on here is we kind of bring everybody together around one subject and that subject is Jesus. And then we split up into um, small groups afterwards. And so we would love, we're going to put the link to each small group in the comment section of this uh, live video. And we would love for you to join one of those groups, whether you be a codependent or an alcoholic or an addict or whatever, or hey, you just stumbled upon you and you're like, they, they look like a lot of fun. I want to join that community and growth group. Um, we would love for you to do that too. Um, somebody else give me some wisdom about about relationships that I'm not asking. I know you all got some nuggets, man. I'm trying to fish them out, trying to get them out yeah. of you. So uh, before we got started, I was thinking about where we are right now, just as a society. And, and no matter what relationship um, you are working on right now, and I think something that I'm not hearing a lot about right now, but I don't know if you guys are, is the fact that we're all going through stages of grief. Yeah. Um, we've all lost something in this process of the coronavirus. And so just to be able to keep that in mind, and if you are going through any of the stages of grief, that it's okay, it's a process, and you're not alone in, in dealing with that right now. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Matthew, what do you have, sir? Are you, did you have something to say, Barb? Okay. Lay some on us, Matthew. Come on. Bring the heat. <laughs> so uh, I guess to touch base on, um, you know, a little bit about what the uh, community and growth group is for um, is – for people who basically have start, started traveling through life without a plan and a map and have hit some bumps and, uh, you know, is looking for that community of people to walk together, to share life, to um, basically laugh, cry, and um, just really come together. And so you know, moving this online now, uh, we're able to reach a lot more people. And so, um, you know, that, that's something that we've, um, I guess it's different for me because, uh, I'm definitely in, you know, in person type relationship. Um, I don't, um, uh, surround myself with a whole lot of people outside of my core group. And so once I get into my group, then I stay there. And so uh, inviting the general public and everybody in all at once is overwhelming. And, but I, you know, I'm willing to take on that challenge and want, you know, to create this community. And so we're up for building relationships with anybody who wants to share life together. That's great. Um, and, and so I'll, I'll just to, just to kind of go with that, um, the really cool thing about um, the Hope Project is we're, we're not just one person. We're a bunch of people that just really happen to love Jesus and love people. And so if you're watching today and you're just like, man, I'm lost. You know, I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm either addicted or I've got a family member that's addicted or, or hey, I'm just I just need community. I just need growth. If you reach out to us, one of these people is going to um, reach back out to you. Like I said, Barb is, is our family care director. She does an amazing job, and she works with all the families of those people who um, are addicted, have been addicted, and need some help to figure out a way to, to kind of find purpose in their life and better themselves and work through a program. Um, and 
Hannah is our uh, administrative assistant. She does all the behind the scenes stuff, but she's always willing to pray over someone, to love on someone. Um, and then we've got John and Amanda. They just have been willing to, to do whatever um, is asked of them, and they're always willing to pray. And uh, how many know uh, having, having a, a prayer warrior in your closet is, is good sometimes? I know it's good all the time, and, and I know that those two are prayer warriors, and I, I really appreciate that about them. And then Nathan and, uh, and Matthew are both entrepreneurs. So, you know, we have people from all walks of life that are a part of our organization that, and if I can't help you or Hannah can't help you, like one of them can help you. So, man, if you hear anything from this video today, hear that, um, man, we're here for you. We're here for you. Ultimately, what we want to do is show you how good life can be, not, not the exterior or the feelings, but how inside good it can be. Um, when you walk with Jesus. The reason we're all here is because of Jesus. The reason I'm alive for sure is because of Jesus. And so uh, that is our, yeah, John's over there raising his hand too. That is kind of our, our, fir our first mission to share with you. Um, but we're not here to shove that down your throat. We're not here to shove religion down your throat and all that stuff that gives you a bad taste for God. We're here to share the sweetness of Jesus Christ with you. The sweetness of a savior. A sweetness of a savior that came 2,000 years ago and, uh, and really did live and die and come out of a tomb uh, and fulfill the prophecy that a savior would be born and save us. Um, so if you hear anything today, man, if you're walking this thing alone and you need some help or, hey, maybe you got a support system and you need some help, reach out to the ministry. You can reach out to us at uh, our Google voice number at 843-284-6526. You can reach out at hello at the hopeproject.cc. And then you can always check our website. That's www.thehopeproject.cc. Um, all three of those, you can get connected to us and we will have a person reach back out to you within 24 hours. But hey, if you're watching today and you're just like, man, I keep hearing him mention this Jesus guy. And I, you know, I don't know anything about that, but maybe I want to know something about that. I'm telling you, I was a heroin addict that was literally killing myself. And Jesus saved me in 2011 and changed me and remade me. So if you think you are in a, a situation that you're, you just can't get out of today, if you're in a situation that um, that you just don't know how to get out of, um, man, we want to be there for you. We want to be there for you as a people. Um, and let me see here. So reach out to us today. Sorry, I got saw a squirrel there. Reach out to us today, and we would love to work with you. And most of all, we would love to tell you about how good Jesus is, and um, and and just tell you about what a relationship with Him looks like. Y'all, this is the best thing I've ever done. I am smoking what I'm selling, y'all. Like, he is so, so good. Um, he, and I, I have no doubt that he is the reason that I'm sitting here today um, immersed in a bunch of great friends, with a bunch of great friends, a, a, you know, a, a pretty great life. I mean, coronavirus ain't got nothing on my Jesus. Um, I want you to... I want you to feel that. I want you to walk that. I want you to experience that. Hey, even if you just like um, a phone call from me and want to hear more about um, who this Jesus guy is, again, reach out to us um, on our Google Voice number. I will answer that phone. It's 843-284-6526. Um, we would love to tell you about what a relationship with Jesus is like because, you know, honestly, this is the reason we do this ministry um, because we love Jesus and we love people. So, Man, we love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, <clears throat> we are going to be doing panels uh, like this from time to time. It'll probably be on Wednesday nights. We want to do this because we were kind of in in a series. And we want to do a Q&A, but we'll probably do those on Wednesday nights. And then we're going to do all kinds of fun stuff to keep you guys connected um, during these tough times. Because I know, man, it, it feels very disconnecting not being around people like Nathan was talking about. It's, you know, you just feel the, the isolation and, and uh, we don't want you to feel that, though. We have stuff going on almost every day of the week um, to keep you connected. And so please reach out if there's anything we can do for you. 
We love you guys, and I'm going to stop talking now. Y'all go to your groups, 715, all right? The comments are in the comment section here. We got three groups. Pick one and go to it. We love you guys. See you later.